Welcome to Damage Boost. I'm your host Brock Holiday, and today we're talking Moon Knight. So let's jump into it. Okay, so today is a very special episode. Technically not video games, but it's my show, so I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want. Um, we're gonna, but to talk about Moon Knight, we're gonna have one of my favorite guests, one, uh, the first guest, the, the one of the pillars of damage. Okay, boost. okay, let's no, not go I, that far. <laughs> no, I, I am. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna butter you up real good. You're just gonna have to take those compliments. Uh, one of the most talented and funny people I have had the pleasure of meeting through this journey of podcasting, D Pad. How are you doing? Uh, good. It's it's great that you um, misidentify me because our main character today is all about <laughs> wrong. I, I something like that. I'm trying to play it off. I appreciate it. Yeah, Moon Knight. Spoilers though, because. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about the whole thing. Um, I think it, it'll be worthwhile just to, like, we're just going to dump our thoughts. Yeah, this is, uh, as you called it, a breakfast conversation. This is, you're sitting at the table while, while two dudes talk about a comic book show yeah. for an hour. You know, and what everyone needs is uh, two white guys talking about something and they have to listen the whole time. That's what we need more in life. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but yeah, I I was really, uh, I'll just say firstly, uh, opinion. I liked it. I liked the show. Yeah. It was pretty good. I don't did think it was perfect, but it did was, you have I liked it. Background like coming into it? Did you have any prior knowledge of the character? I only knew bits and pieces in that like I had seen him visually, like Moon Knight. Uh, I know that people like. He's like a wild card in a way, and and people sometimes describe him as being crazy, and not like crazy as like in like a um, derogatory way, but crazy as like if you think of comic book or or even just now uh, movie characters, it's like um, Deadpool is like the go-to like wacky character who breaks the fourth wall and does weird stuff, uh, but like Moonlight is or <laughs> Moon Knight is up there with uh, un predictability because apparently <clears throat> like his, his old like battle style is just like not even trying to dodge which you see in the show which is great uh but like uh, one of the only things i knew is like fun fact like taskmaster um who is capable of like copying like literally anyone we saw taskmaster in um black widow the movie I mean, you could argue that we technically still ta Taskmaster, but that was a shit version of Taskmaster. <laughs> I don't think she was that bad, but either way, Taskmaster, uh, the one person that they won't copy is Moon Knight, because it would involve, like, getting themselves brutally destroyed. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't know a lot. I just knew, like, a vague idea of the character. So when we got into this, I wasn't sure what to expect, but I, I left pre pleasantly surprised. What about you? What did you think of the, the show overall? So I had zero knowledge of it other than I love Oscar, Oscar Isaac. Um, mm -hmm. He was one of the few bright spots of the, the newer Star Wars movies, and uh, he was in the Spider-Verse, and I think he's continued to be in the Spider-Verse um, movies as they come out. I really liked it mm -hmm. um, more than I probably... Probably the most of any any uh, of the Marvel shows. It did fall into that same thing where I don't think they have the right amount of episodes. I think you and I talked about this uh, off air yeah. a couple days ago. Like six is too short. I think eight would have been perfect. And they, they do that thing where episodes four and five, have they have a really good slow burn. But then all of a sudden it's episode six. And like, shit, we gotta do everything in this last episode. So I think if you take like four through four through six, slow burn it there. And then have your big, uh, your big stuff be over two final episodes. It would balance it out a lot better because it did do that. We spent basically two episodes in the, the, well, you know, whatever you want to call that sequence. That it wasn't technically reality. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and that that and then all of a sudden to go back to reality and have all the big stuff finally the consequences that was a little bit rough that so like i think that's just marvel pacing its shows has been really really bad um i, yeah. I, I, I like loki had that same problem um wandavision uh winter soldier and falcon falcon will soldier gosh there we go mm -hmm. uh is there another one am i missing a show i mean there's been what if i didn't i didn't watch what if i wasn't i wasn't too into it yeah uh, but yeah, I, that is part of why I say it's not great. There is a, l yeah. a couple other things, but like when I say it's not great, that means if it is out of ten, it, it might be a seven out of ten. Yeah. But I, I use the full scale, and I still think it's really enjoyable. And of any of the shows so far, of, of the MCU shows, this I th think is the where I'm most likely to rewatch. Um, Same. Same. Because it has elements that make you go, oh, this, like, things that you learn later that might change how you perceive things early on. But then also, I just think, yeah, Oscar Isaac's performance is incredible. And Holy I, shit. I, I even almost mentioned it in one of my videos over on Consume Content, my side channel, where I very rarely upload just, like, stuff. Uh, and I did a, a discussion video for every episode thus far, though I haven't released episode six or my eventual uh, season video uh, but I almost mentioned it there that I would love if he just like carried an episode all on his own and that's essentially what he did in episode 5 yep um, and it works and <sighs> he's incredible um, yeah I, I, I can't say it under with and he's just he's just great he, he um, was why that show was good and um, they gave her some moments uh, I don't know the actress's name that plays um, Layla Layla um but she got some of those moments too, where uh, in the last episode when she just uh, became the avatar for one of them, where she, she was kind of doing the little bit of the like different, like someone's controlled me for a minute, where I really bought it. I was like, holy shit, this! And she was badass. Like they gave her a lot to chew on in that final episode, and it was yeah. cool to see that other people in that show could be good because she finally got that time. But no, I'm with you, Oscar Isaac. Like holy shit, yeah. Like I'm pretty sure I'm straight, but that dude is he's just fucking incredible like oh my god uh he just to realize that he's acting basically off of nobody <laughs> as two yeah. different characters well he's acting he off of himself which is crazy yeah i mean yeah yeah which yeah it's just and when it first started i was confused I'm like oh wait is that how he actually talks like and then i just he's just played a character that fucking convincing like, not only the voice, but the mannerisms and just everything is... I don't know how he did it. Like, that's incredible. And I wish... It just made me more sad that Star, the new Star Wars movie sucked. Because if that yeah. dude's got that much fucking talent, why did... Like, he needed to be in it more. And he needed to be more than just a cocky pilot. Because holy shit, that dude can... He can play everything. Yeah, and it's even... It was great to the point where I didn't realize he was he was one of the main characters in ex machina <laughs> like oh shit uh, was he really yeah he he was the the tech billionaire who invites the main character i didn't realize that was him to, yeah i i know right <laughs> it's just like totally don't even realize it. and like oh my god yeah no no that's him um gary ullman used to be that same way where i had no idea gary ullman was in particular movies that i would watch yeah and so like, good go off sorry in in recent memory he was uh <laughs> The unreasonably attractive father in Dune, um, he was both a super emotional Brit and stoic, troubled uh, American dude in Moon Knight. A sort of unhinged, weird tech billionaire in Ex Machina. And like all those, and obviously Ace Pilot in, in Star Wars, and all those feel like different people. Like, yep. I know they're him, but moment to moment, I'm like, no, yeah, no, these are these are different roles. So like, I think he did such a great job, and they knew that and capitalized on it. And like, obviously they they um, in the editing of Moon Knight, they established uh, that certain sound cue where like, where and then the 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 cameras or. We jump forward in time to like a different um, alter, an alternate personality, and um, 
that became clear when they were swapping back and forth. But um, there was at least a few where you just see him switch in camera with nothing. One example is, I think it's episode three when they're in the desert and they're trying to figure out the star map. And Mark's like, fine, take over. And you just see him like become Stephen Grant. And he's like, all right, cheers, mate. And it's like, it sells it so perfectly. And there was no audio sound effects. There's no et like editing tricks. Uh, to sort of reinforce the fact that he just changed personas. But the way his face and then the voice and, like, it, it was incredible. Like, um, I, can't, he, cannot, I cannot sing his praises enough. Like, and, it's great. And he didn't have to be a dickhead about it like Jared Leto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, speaking of comic book heroes, Morbius... The, the greatest film, <laughs> trillions of tickets sold on day one. No, um, oh, that dancing scene with the Doctor Who guy, I can't get over. I, I I I haven't seen Morbius, and I don't plan on it. I haven't. I just seen the TikToks. Oh, <laughs> like, okay, yeah. I I have I have seen content talking about Morbius, but I've never seen it myself. I, but yeah, I Sony shouldn't fucking make movies. I my, me my me and my too. brother months back were like Morbius, hell yeah, let's check it out. And then we both heard it was bad, and I was like, hey, I want to see Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And he's like, sure. And that was amazing. So I'm glad we made that decision. Uh, I would see Sonic the Hedgehog 2 two more times rather than see Morbius a single time. Oh, um, yeah. But Morbius Moon Knight. was a shitty character in the comics, <laughs> anyway. It was such a dumb idea. I, but I was going to say also, um, I think Andrew Garfield said, uh, why, why is it that uh, when you're method acting, it's only ever to be an asshole? Why can't you yeah. just. <laughs> yeah. Why well, you can't? No, you that just... was uh, Robert Patterson. Oh, sorry, was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was Andrew Garfield. My bad. Um, they both yeah. did comment on basically how Leto was a piece of shit. <sighs> yeah, but Moon Knight, specifically Moon Knight. So overall, the show, I liked it. Um, I thought it did a great job of instilling this sense of uneasiness and confusion. And I think even from the beginning, there's a lot of elements of like we don't know what's going on so i think by the end we have a bit, pretty good idea so i'm gonna like give you the equivalent of a plot synopsis along with a sort of like like i'm gonna give you an overview so okay. and then you can tell me whether or not i'm off anywhere or or what and then we can go from there all right share so, me with it buddy <clears throat> moon knight moon knight is the name of mark specter uh when he is you know Acting under Khonshu, the, the the god of vengeance and all that uh, from Egyptian mythology. Um, technically, his alter, Stephen Grant, is Mr. Knight, but we never actually hear that used in the show. But Mark Spector is an American troubled past. Uh, he, 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 he serves Khonshu, and we follow not him, not even his brother no his 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 alternate personality that at first we're not sure if, if they know about each other but that becomes clear later uh steven grant who doesn't know about mark specter doesn't know about conchu doesn't know about anything he doesn't even realize that he's not real he was created as a response to trauma um early on by mark um sort of styled after a old school Indiana Jones-esque film. So, so Stephen Grant's not real. And I think that was a really interesting choice, obviously, to uh, to pick him as, as the lead. Uh, because comic book-wise, people knew. But in the show, we didn't actually know that he wasn't the original until episode 5. Which is that much more heartbreaking. Um, but throughout the show, we, we, we learn more and more that he is not the only one in his head that there are forces in play that he doesn't understand and by the end we understand that him and mark specter share a body he might not be original but he is his own person and mark will literally give up paradise to save him but there's a third altar that they don't know about uh called jake lockley and the thing is that actually throws a wrench in things the point where we still might not know what happened in the entire show, despite getting to the end. <laughs> because a 
thematic device uh, slash editing thing they do, just general storytelling method, is that early on in episode one and two, and even by the end with the final battle, which is actually I think is a bad thing, but get into that, is that they'll jump forward in time to uh, go from it being Steven to someone and then Steven again, and that adds a lot of confusion and 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 questions and oftentimes there's bloody people all around him yep. <clears throat> which is crazy for a mcu film uh but also it's it's troubling you're like oh my god what am i capable of like because he doesn't understand what's going on and we're like "Ooh, this is spooky um and the thing is i can't say for certain uh it, when he's in the alps he blacks out three times once surrounded by people and twice in the ice cream truck um it's quite possible that mark took stepped in and killed those people because he is he is a mercenary he has killed before but we see in his sort of mind palace asylum thing uh that he remembers the face of every person he's killed and names them by location and there's only enough people that it feels like those are only the people he's killed actively as Moon Knight. Which right. would be weird because I think there was at least six, seven, eight, nine, ten bodies in the Alps. And it's possible that was Jake through all of those. Um, and we know that it was Jake when they were in... Was it Cairo? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and Mark was trying to get the information out of these three... <laughs> I guess hoodlums and uh, Steven's fighting back because at that point he doesn't want Mark to do anything bad and then there's a, a, a jump cut and two are dead and the third throws himself off the cliff in the name of name of Amet the, the goddess of being a crocodile or whatever the sexy crocodile <laughs> don't there's been people thirsting after crocodile stop it it's weird <laughs> but yeah um, so we have this weird element right but then it gets more confusing because in episode four at the end, bang, bang, <laughs> Arthur Harrow, the, the, the main, um, uh, antagonist. I, yeah. Well, yeah, antagonist, but I was going to say main follower. Uh, we all know the main antagonist is actually Mark's mom. <laughs> yeah. Um, Holy shit. We'll get to that later. Yeah. The follower of Amit, uh, he shoots Mark dead. They straight up die, and then they go to the asylum, the uh, Egyptian sort of uh, in between place uh, between you know death and whatever comes after. And that gets confusing because even within that, there is a sub level of a delusion with the mental hospital, but the mental hospital also sort of shapes the asylum. So I think what we have is like the living world and then the undead world, which is with the duat and and the 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 sailing across the duat on the ship, and the interior of the ship takes the shape of the mental hospital and acts as like a sort of hub world to all these different memories so that they can relive their life. But I think below that is a delusion of the same place of like mainly the office with Arthur Harrow. That's what I think is going on. Right. But it raises the question of when we get to the very end, they trap Arthur Harrow. By the way, this is a horrible overview because I'm jumping around so much, but uh, regardless. Okay. We're good. By the, we get to the end. Arthur Harrow and uh, Amit have been sort of locked in together. Uh, Amit's been trapped inside of Arthur Harrow's body as a way to uh, constrain her. It, like, And Conchie wants to kill him. Mark refuses, because why not? <laughs> it is kind of weird. We talk about that it, later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and Khonshu says that he'll leave them. Uh, Mark slash Steven passes out. And then they come to, I believe, not in the duet, in, in, in Mark's version of the asylum, but inside of the delusion. And that's where we actually get a weird bit because suddenly Arthur Harrow, his feet are bleeding because it's actually him and they know it's him and he knows that 
he's there, but he's not dead. So why he couldn't be in the duet? I don't think. Right. Because at that point they just had been. So it's possible, like, because right after that they're like, "Oh, we choose to be awake," and then they fall backwards and then wake up in their bed. Is them in their bed, back at home, all buddy buddy with the leg restraint on, two goldfish in the fish tank? Is that still a delusion? It's possible. I hope not. Not the whole show is a delusion, but just everywhere from them losing consciousness to them waking up again, or like them losing consciousness to the end of the show, which is only like a few minutes for them. That could all be a delusion, because in the post credits we see Jake Lockley. The third altar that was hinted at throughout and is most likely have been acting uh, under Conchu's orders the whole time. Which is like crazy. Because Conchu seems to like not really care about his avatar. He doesn't really care if they do this or that. And then it makes so much more sense if he was just playing them the whole time. Like he threatened to kill them both. Both Mark and Steven. If Steven loses Scarab. And he seems just like, <laughs> he threatens that he'll um, have Layla become the next Avatar and all this and that. And the only time Khonshu actually considers having Layla as his Avatar is when Mark, Steven, and also technically Jake are dead. Yeah. Because now Jake's not available. But the second Jake's available again, he's like, eh, whatever. Yep. Because I think that Jake has been the the actual avatar the entire time and um or, or rather that because jake has been the avatar it doesn't matter whether or not the other two say that they're done because they're never really done it's so crazy to think about and it's possible that they're in a delusion at the very end uh which would be interesting because it means that Kanchu leaving them we, we could consider maybe it's like Kanchu leaving them made them regress back to something like because the healing i don't know i don't know what like it might not be the case maybe they're just doing fine and jake takes over occasionally but it's it's weird that that's where my brain's at yeah is um because they're both waking up like steve did at the beginning so it's almost like coming full circle and then they yeah i I mean and, and and to be fair uh, the only reason I think of stuff like that is because the show throughout has done its best to tell you that, hey, things might not be as it seems, so it's possible. Like, people like to think of, like, oh my god, in Pokemon, Ash has been in a coma ever since he was shocked by lightning in episode one. Which is stupid, because the show never, the source material never gives you any reason to yeah. think that's even an option. Which is why I think that it's they've been dead the whole time. They've been in a coma. It's all a dream. All those tropes are really crappy because you. oftentimes the reasoning people have for them is just non-existent. In this case, I still don't think that's the case. I, I do think that everything was real while they were alive. Uh, the only thing in question, in my opinion, is what was the... Um, I'll say what was the duet, the uh, underworld, and what was the delusion in the duet. Um, there's a little confusion there, which yeah. isn't much. And then there's just the confusion at the very end with Jake Lockley, because, I mean, it's, it is possible that he, it, it, you know, if they're all still fine, then he just has his own life that he lives. Because I think even like his license plate has his name on it, right? Yep. Like in the comics, apparently it's, uh, Stephen Grant, who is like a billionaire, whatever, or millionaire. I don't know. Um, inflation. <laughs> but he's a rich guy and it seems they've taken that archetype and added it to Jake uh, because also in the comics Jake is a cab driver but in this he drives a limo um, so it seems maybe they like sort of combined and mishmash that for Jake uh, which is interesting uh, also in the comics Jake is way more <laughs> aggressive than the others also he it's his suit that's Mo- or Mr. Knight um, I, I think but the, Mr. Knight has a different sort of persona in the comics, but either way, they remixed it for the show, obviously. Um, I, I like it. I like it all. I want to see more of Moon Knight. I do think it totally deserves a second season or a solo film because dealing with uh, Jake Lockley and all that doesn't feel like something they could reasonably do in like 
the side portion of a team up film, like how they introduced Spider Man in right. uh, what is it? Uh, is it Captain America? Yep, yeah, uh, uh, Civil War. Yeah, yeah, That's what it is. yeah. Like they introduced him there, which was great, but when you have more emotional beats and a more complex storyline, it doesn't feel right to, to stuff that in there. But the show's really good. Really good. And um, there's the, all these different elements where once you know that Jake's in there, because people were guessing for a while, um, it, it, it makes a lot a lot of things more clear. Um, and it's like, okay, so now we know maybe who was taking over. We know definitely know who took over in Cairo. We, we, we have an idea of maybe that's who was taking over when he was escaping the Alps. Uh it's just it's also a thing like we never figured out actually if it was Mark Spector who asked that tour guide in episode one out on a date to, uh, for a steak dinner yep. despite uh, Stephen being a vegan and also having not probably does, doesn't have the con uh, the confidence to do that I thought yeah maybe it's Mark but then we learned that He's he left oh, his shit. wife Layla because he recently had his oh by the way his his mom died his 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 abusive i believe uh, it became alcoholic white uh mom died and at that point he just felt like there was no hope for anything and that's why he was so set on finishing his deal with conchu and then giving up and letting steven live his happy life because he doesn't feel like he could be happy and oh my god it's so sad but like with all that knowledge you think why the hell would he ask a random tour guide out on a date jake <laughs> where did the name Scotty come from? It's possible. Uh, maybe I'm realizing now. Maybe the the security guy from the museum, having interacted with Jake a few times, maybe even just saw the hat he wears, his sort of like flat uh, cap, uh, sort of cabbie hat, and maybe he's like uh, some sort of stereotype. Like, oh, like it's like like what a Scott would wear. Like, oh, Scotty. Uh, like so, something like that, right? Like, yeah. there's all these little tidbits that are like, oh shit, okay, like something there could be the reason. And I also like the idea that maybe it's Jake already knew about the other two because he was formed in a different way, so that he knew to avoid raising suspicion uh, to some extent. Because Mark obviously knows about Stephen. Stephen doesn't know about Mark, uh, and because by only at the start of the show, we're two months after uh, the, uh, his mother's death, and that's when their walls start breaking down. But it's spooky that Jake has it's possibly he's been there even before, and <laughs> Mark says that he tried to stop uh, his his partner from killing uh, Layla's father, the archaeologist, which I, I do think is real. I don't think his partner is Jake or anything like that. Okay. But I mean, like, what if by trying to stop it, it means like Jake interfered somewhere in there? Like we have, <laughs> it, it becomes like a oh my god, is, is there an imposter among us? Like <laughs> there, there's so many little tidbits where I'm like I wonder if Jake had a hand in this, and thus did Contra have a hand in this? Like it's so, it's so interesting, good. and that's that's especially why I think it's worth a rewatch because you have this information and confirmation that Jake is a thing. And has been there a while. And you gotta wonder how much has he actually been in the show. Uh, did he kill the fish? Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Like, I don't know. I, I I think they're wrong with he died from starvation. But I think Mark was only gone in the Alps for like maybe two or three days. Goldfish so I don't know. Silly, oh shit, so. <coughs> uh, so I got two... two uh... Yeah. Two comments and then a question. Sure. Uh, to piggyback off it. One, I just want to comment on. I do hate, the like, in every fan theory, it's there the, the whole time. Uh, yes. I don't know if you're a fan of the show Bob's Burgers or not, but... I, 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 I'm, I am aware of enough to talk about it, but... Yeah, there, the, there was a really dumb fan theory that all the, the stuff at the beginning, they show, like, how his restaurant gets, like, messed up, is how the kids have died and they're mm. not actually there in anything. Oh my god! Which is that makes no fucking sense. Like it doesn't work. I'm just like that's dumb. That's like the Rugrats. I think the Rugrats theory is one of the worst ones. It's like what's that one? Not... <laughs> oh, 
You don't know. I don't know. And that, I'm of that age, so like. Okay, so you know about Rugrats. You're familiar with Rugrats. I'm very right? familiar with Rugrats. Okay, yes. so uh, Rugrats. For those who don't know, cartoon follows a bunch of uh, babies and toddlers. Technically, uh, Angelica is the main sort of antagonist for the the the, the, the main group of characters because she is a bratty little like four or five year old. Yeah. Yeah, um, and one of the main theories is, like, that everything that goes on is inside her head, and that, uh, I forget their names, but the twins, that Phil their mother, Lil. yeah, yeah, Phil and Lil, but I don't know their mother's name, but Phil and Lil aren't real, and that their mother had a, a miscarriage, so she didn't know who, if the baby was going to be a boy or a girl, so she's like, oh, they're twins, because they're both uh, and that, like, uh, this and that, that, like, never actually born, and that's why, uh, uh, Dill Pickle? M M uh, Tommy's Mr. brother is Dill. Okay, so Tommy Pickle, uh, Mr. Pickle Stu. makes all these toys, or Stu Pickle yeah. makes all these toys and, and does all this stuff because he mourns the loss and blah, 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 blah. It goes on so long that it's like, it is interesting to think about, but it's also complete bullshit. It's so fucking dumb. <laughs> so, like, yeah, yeah. It's, but, because that yeah. show, I, sorry, we're side tangent to Rugrats, but that show, yeah. like, actually was one of the first kids' shows. To like deal with death in a way that uh, like didn't shy from it, talk about it with. There's like I don't. The was that a question or a statement? Because I don't think they were necessarily the first, but I do think of they like, covered of like Nickelodeon they, shows. I don't know, they covered a lot of hard topics that yeah, most the, shows wouldn't, which I do think is great. When they revealed and they that did... Chucky's mom's been dead and like how his dad has <clears> has been <throat> grieving and how he he starts to actually explain to Chucky like, oh no, your mom's dead. Uh, sucks, doesn't it? Like it was actually for one of the first. It was the first time I ever remember seeing something like that. So that's kind of where I'm basing that off of, for like people yeah. of my age. That was the first time mm -hmm. seeing that in a cartoon. Yeah, I'm not sure. And then hey, in Arnold the scope of television, down. whether or not that was first. But yeah, Hey Arnold and and for, Rugrats for, for did cover a lot. Of... It was the first time a lot of us had sure, seen yeah. that subject matter. Yeah. Um, speaking of hard subject matter. <laughs> Moon Knight, ugh. but you had you had multiple comments. Yes. So, what was your other comment and also question? Um, oh God, I, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the question first, so I can remember sure. the comment. Giant alligator bird skeleton fight at the okay. very end uh, did not look as bad as like the. I unfortunately it was spoiled for me on Twitter, which fucking okay. annoying. But it didn't look as bad as people made it out to be. They actually, I thought the CGI for a lot of. Oh, you mean like visually? Yeah, well, yeah, well I'll, I'll, that's not part of the question, but just to comment, I actually thought they it looked pretty good considering how bad CGI has been in Marvel movies, especially Black Widow. Um, and I, I have a comment on that, but go, keep going. What's your, what's the actual question part? I assume because when he fights that monster in episode one or two, that no uh -huh. one could see it, but it affected the reality around there's uh -huh. not just, like, people of Egypt aren't seeing that happening, right? They're, like, we're just being able to see it so, like, we can enjoy it because it's a TV show. But technically, like, they're in their own, like, little thing, right? Am I right? Or are there, they are, are people in the Marvel Universe now just, so you're, like, you're asking we, whether or not they could see the kaiju yes, fight? Yes, yes. I don't think anyone other than Mark slash Steven... Whatever I am referring to them, I'm usually referring to them both, but it's easier to say that Mark is, like, the individual, you know? Yeah. Either way, Mark and Layla can both see it. No one else can. Because if, if you follow the rules, or I guess also Arthur, uh, Layla can never see Conchu. She can never see the, the jackals uh, when they're summoned by um, Arthur early on. Mm -hmm. um, the security cameras can't see the jackal that trapes through the museum none of those effects can be seen because they are from a different sort of plane of existence kind of thing yep it's just that yes they do physically move and affect stuff um so for the kaiju fight uh i do think it just looked like stuff was getting slammed around and maybe that it was like a weird earthquake like an earthquake yeah um <sighs> Uh, yeah. it's when the sexy gator fought the giant bird skeleton. Um. Oh my god! I, okay, I, yeah, I was my my comment reverse it. Uh, I didn't think it was visually bad. I also don't agree that most or you said that a lot of 
visual effects and MCU stuff has been bad. Uh, and then you mentioned Black Widow. I do agree Black Widow has some bad stuff, but I don't think it's fair to say that MCU stuff in general is bad. Not in general. Or has been bad. It feels like I, more recently it's been it's been slacky. You know what I mean? I do think that they have to pick and choose for the shows for sure. Because there are some bits in Moon Knight that look trash. Yeah. Mainly green screen stuff. Yeah. But there's another point I made in my sort of episode episode discussion is that you got to pick your battles and they're like, we don't care that the background in the Alps looks like trash or the background uh, yeah. replacement for the cliff in episode three look trash. You just got to deal with it. <laughs> it's one of those things. I, I agree that I, I, I think the Kaiju fight was good visually. And most of the, the the visuals for the final episode were good. It's just that, why did they have to be kaijus? That yeah. is what doesn't make any sense to me. Because it looks cool. We but... want to see giant alligator titties. <laughs> oh, shut up! <laughs> the... I don't think you even see that. I don't even think that's even part of her design. They're, they're implied. God damn it! <laughs> She's not a. Alligators are mammals. Only mammals have breasts f for. The delivery of milk. But you've been on the internet. Shut up! That's not what I'm talking <laughs> Everything about. Everything okay. gets tits no, on the internet. No, but it, but it makes no sense why she has to grow in... Like, okay, if she's... If it's just, like, a visual thing, she's growing in powder because she's consuming the souls that are being reaped. She's just, like, going numb, numb. That makes it sense. It was kind of then, funny. <laughs> she was just why kind of jumping can, down. <laughs> why can Khonshu randomly grow to match her size? That didn't make any sense. <laughs> There's no... That's my issue with it, is that there's not a lot of logic there. But then again, fuck it. I mean, it looks cool. Yeah, like, yeah, it was, it was the show itself it. is a little wacky and weird, and Moon Knight is a little wacky and weird. I don't... It, <laughs> I, I, I do think that is an issue. Uh, my, really, I actually... Like, I, I mentioned previously, I agree. The pacing isn't great. Um, on the final episode, I thought it was a very interesting choice to cut when... It seemed like they were at their limit, and apparently Jake steps in and demolishes everyone and uh, disables uh, Arthur. But the problem is that I think that was really cheap and yep. unfortunate, and they should have done it something differently. Because <sighs> it didn't feel satisfying for that. I, I think it would have been... <clears throat> I just wish they did it differently. Um, kind of like when uh, he Arthur walks in to all the other avatars and they're like all gearing up and then like they literally cut in a second later they're just all on the ground. I'm like, I want to see what happened. What are the other avatars' powers? Why was Arthur so fucking strong? Like, it didn't make well, any I, fucking sense. That that's part of the pacing issue, though. I think that yeah, they didn't have time yeah. to do that. It's a pacing thing. It's also a, I I think it's just like. It's also logistics of, like, okay, if you were to see, even for only, like, 30 seconds, 10 different characters don their own versions of their own suits or, or, or outfits to match their gods, that's a lot of fucking effort and time and money. It's and fucking Disney. The, they have I'm the just money saying, time. I'm just saying! <laughs> they have a certain budget, and I don't think Moon Knight was even supposed to be that big of a thing because they were worried I think I think that they were worried that it might not do well so they didn't want to put the whole hog into it if that makes any sense which is also why there is literally no connection to the MCU no name drop there's like there's nothing not to say it's like oh it's not in the MCU I just say that it's it, it's like they, they made it perfectly so that there's a perforated line between Moon Knight and everything else so that if they need to they could just rip it off and then act like it never happened because they weren't sure if it's going to do well. That's my take on it. But I think it did really well. I do think we're going to get more. If we don't, I will riot. I will <laughs> I, I will write a sternly uh, uh, worded tweet to uh, them because I do think we need more. But that's my thought process, which is why I don't think the budget was exemplary, which is why I think they had to make their choices. And some of the choices ended up making it feel a little sort of watered down slash unfulfilling, but I appreciate what they were trying to do. Also, I gotta say, them just fighting a normal looking person, flinging them through the air, uh, Arthur, yeah. looked really fucking goofy and weird. <laughs> yeah. But I appreciate what they're going for. It looked cool to see Mr. Knight. It looked so good to see Mr. Knight and Moon Knight fighting together back, 
back and forth, swapping. The choreography so was so satisfying. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did really like the choreography. I don't think we got as much as we could have, but the f- I appreciate what we did get. The fights had weight to them. And, like, I, I describe that as in, like, the difference between Transformers and Pacific Rim. Like, you watch Transformers oh, and yeah. everything slides uh, everywhere. It doesn't feel like clarification, a Clarification, Pacific Rim 1. One, Pacific yeah. Rim 2 sucks ass. I refuse to even acknowledge that fucking movie. Okay, good. Okay. As, as long as the same page. I yeah. agree, though. Yes. Uh, but, Pacific Rim 1 has an incredible sense of weight. Yes. And it, it uses realism in terms of physics and sort of consequences to make the otherwise crazy kaiju versus robot fights using a ship as a bat or a, a cargo ship as a bat. Yep. All that is great. It's using the realism to sort of boost the craziness. It gives it... In this yeah. one, there are some elements that are like, yeah, hell yeah, but also like, that's fucking silly. Like, why, <laughs> why did he make a jet sound when he was flying through the air with his moon cape? I don't get... I mean, maybe he was breaking the fly, sound barrier, but that's make... not what it sounded like. And he made, and he made a moon with his cape. <laughs> well, yeah, but... I'll, and then also, why did he land partway down on... Why, yes, why did he just hit him at the up? top? <laughs> I was like, oh, he's going to fly into him. This is going to be cool. He's going to knock him off. I, I, I saw some comments that were like, he landed on the bottom because he knew how cool it looked when they're running at each other. <laughs> and it's like, landing. fucking, yeah, I guess. So that's why it's like, the show's not perfect. It's not it's not amazing. But I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, and that's where I, 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 I was actually finding myself disagreeing with a number of these sort of Marvel kind of people. I, I follow only like two of them, but there's a few... Uh, Marvel slash comic book slash whatever creators on TikTok. I know Sir Superhero Nick something. Mm. Um, Straw Hat Goofy talks about stuff. I don't like his stuff as much as the others. No shade. I'm just saying. Yeah, there's no, a he, bunch he, of he TikTok kinda, creators. Yeah, what, what Straw Hat Goofy blew up a little bit. His stuff's been a little less digestible. Yeah, it's... Everyone has a flavor. Not for me. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's a number of creators on TikTok that talk about mcu and other stuff and i watched their videos and they were like praise after praise after praise and i'm like where is the mention of the pacing this yep, or that it's like I, I i do not agree that it's perfect i do not agree that they absolutely nailed it out of the park because i think that the final episode felt rushed but i do agree that it was really fun and really great it, um it was overall a, if we're gonna keep going sports analogies uh, it was a stand-up double that maybe could have stretched into a triple. That's how I described this show. It just yeah. really, really, really good. Could have been great. Uh, yeah. But you're you're happy with what you got. Yeah. And and also, it's always important to know that, just like I mentioned, like I used the full uh, s- score from 1 to 10. I, I, I don't just do that half-assed, like, anything above a 6 is great, anything below is awful. I also feel like... When you criticize something, it doesn't mean that it's you hate it, or it doesn't mean you want it to do yes. bad. It means that you are trying to think about it in the most um, reasonable way possible. And I don't think it's good to have unfettered praise if there is an issue. And I also don't think it's good to have unfettered criticism when there are good things. But on the internet, um, you can only do one or the other. Otherwise, people yeah. get mad. And You're not allowed to be it in is the a, <laughs> It is a slippery slope into annoying centrism or center yep. centrist is whatever you could be that guy or annoying modder who's like eh, well the, it was just sort of it was it was mid and it's like that's not what i'm saying um but yeah it so i have an uh, update on is it Amet? sure is that how you say i met uh oh Amit. yeah on Amit. uh so not just technically uh a gator oh my uh God. four quarters lion hind quarters the uh, four quarters of a lion's so like the waist Stop above. Stop looking up her anatomy. The, what is wrong with well, you? Well, hold on. Let me finish. Uh, okay. Uh, hind quarters of a hippopotamus and the head of a crocodile. So, uh, we we're both right in a way. It was not gator titties. Uh, oh my but god. The, that part is a mammal, so it was technically lion titties. Oh my god! Okay. Damn it! I just that means she might have six of them. <gasps> no! It's like Total Recall. But twice as good. <laughs> oh my god. I did a math joke there on top of an inappropriate it. joke. <laughs> I'm really proud of myself. But yeah, um, 
It was actually okay. So the acting was really good too. I would say <clears throat> almost all around. I can't think of a performance in the show where I was like, "That was kind of weird," or "That feels out of place." I, yeah. I think um, is it Ethan Hawke? Um, yes. Uh, he did great. Like, uh, and I I didn't think I would like him. He's he's always been kind of vanilla for me. Like he's always been fine in things. Sure. But I never felt I like that. he has elevated a character. And, and I mean, I haven't seen a lot of his stuff. So, and I'm not I'm not like an acting fucking coach or something but I'm, the yeah, last yeah. thing i remember him being like a big player in was the very first purge and he was fine he did the role mm. good job mm-hmm. but it wasn't like oh my god remember ethan hawk in that movie this role though like he gave that character personality but in like a real subdued way it was like i actually thought he did an incredible job yeah i i agree that he doesn't feel like a standout actor when you think of him I think he's a little more understated, and he has been in a number of good things. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, in this role, he did really good. I do think the only issue with Ethan Hawke and his portrayal of Arthur and all that is that, like, when he shoots the gun, hell yeah. When he's being intimidating, hell yeah. But when you have to see him fighting and, like, throwing um, uh, Moon Knight around and all that, it doesn't feel right. It feels like it, yeah. you should have... You should have visually made him different in some way that makes it a little yeah, what make could it a little he more a sense. Suit? Like everyone else has suits. Well a suit or, or or even if he was just became a little corrupted or something something visually to make him obviously not just look like a normal dude flying through the air. Yep. It was it was a little goofy. It was a little, it was a little weird. Um but no. that's not his fault. I think it was just it's 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 similar to how oftentimes unfortunately Peter Parker without the Spider-Man suit flying through the air and doing stuff is going to look a little weird. Um, and that's not even digging on the CG. I just think, like, conceptually, you're like, this doesn't feel right. Like, you see that a little bit with uh, Peter Parker doing stuff uh, without his suits in Spider-Man um, uh, Far From Home. Like, when he's doing stuff in the canals and he's just wearing, like, a mask and he has his backpack and He's wearing khakis and, like, button-up or whatever. Like, it looks a little weird. Yep. That's um, also goddamn Marvel not keeping masks and shit on people. God damn it. <laughs> no, no, no. I, that's not what I mean. I, I mean, know. No, I just yeah. I had to get that in because yeah, yeah, that yeah. irritates yeah, yeah. me so bad. Um, but, yeah, I do think Ethan Hawke did great. I think Oscar Isaac did great. I, I think all of the supporting actors, um, by the way, rest in peace, unironic, to the actor who played Anton who was literally only there for one role. Uh, he, he Anton was the, the guy in the red robe, the, the rich dude uh, who had the horse jousting and the big party. Yeah. That dude. He unfortunately passed, I believe, oh in, at the start of this year. Just completely out of the blue. And I, I do think his role was supposed to be more important for this, um, which is unfortunate. Um, so he's young but, as hell. Yeah, it was a it was like a skiing accident or something. It, it was really unfortunate, but I wanted to throw that out there. He did a good job. Every there was a lot of side characters, a lot of random rabble of like the followers of Ahmet following around, and I think there are a few visually that you could point out and be like, oh, I remember slightly overweight white dude, maybe orange hair with a beard and all that. Like there are a couple of characters like, oh, I remember him and him and him. I mentioned him because I think uh, the slightly overweight bearded I'm thinking of is the guy who had his guts ripped out in that the thing was legitimately fucking scary by the way <laughs> yeah yeah I, I I think everyone just did a pretty good job there were some weird bits of like but it fits of like uh Tawa et Tawar et Tawar Tawar et I don't know how to say it Hippo Goddess when the Hippo Goddess was talking through the dead bodies it was a little a little goofy, but, like, that was the point. Yeah, she's supposed um, to be, like, kind of not fit yeah. the mold. I like Yeah, it. but uh, Layla also was great, and I had her name here, but I don't even know how to say it. It's Her her first name's May, the actress, and then her last name is Kalamui? Kalamui? Something like that? Apologies, I don't know how to say it, but she did a great job as Layla... I mentioned I I, I I hate to keep mentioning my side channel thing, but only because I talked about it in these videos, and I want to bring it back. Um, like when she was walking into the tomb in episode four, I believe, 
and confronted uh, Mark as like, did you kill my father? She was so fucking angry mm -hmm. and upset and like... I literally said she looked like she could have been a skinwalker. Like, someone <laughs> took over her body because she was radiating malice. And she, she did such a great job in this role. Which is awesome because by the end, we actually got something a bit unique. So, um, Hippogoddess, which again, I'm going to mess up her name. Tawaret. Tawaret. Whatever. Uh, she actually had never shown up in the MCU comics. She's a real thing, like a part of Egyptian mythology. But that god has just never popped up. So her inclusion is new. And her having an avatar, at least in the MCU comic sort of uh, sphere, is new. Uh, so technically she became the Scarlet Scarab, which is an existing character. But it's different enough that she feels like an original like hero. Yeah. Born just like... A new IP. <sighs> yeah. It, she feels like a new thing, which is crazy because the only other... MCU original that I could think of or that comes close is Agent Coulson. Um, and then they're from, like, let's just shove him in TV and not use him again. I, to be fair, he he carried that shit. That was, Actor's great. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 show was I, actually I feel... Pretty good. Yeah. Um, also, why does the hippo goddess have wings? Or why does the hippo goddess uh, avatar have wings? I don't I don't care. Her, her outfit was amazing. They did sort of do her sort of like reveal with the wings literally twice back to back which felt a little crappy <laughs> yeah uh what what the f wait oh dude this is messing me up one second oh, how good. old is may how old is she okay okay <laughs> what what uh so so I, i'm just i was just curious the actress is 35 years old which is whatever I only don't call that old. Up, don't call it old, you son of a bitch. I'm not. I'm okay. not. I'm not. Okay. I only bring it up because the wiki I'm looking at for some reason says that Layla. What? Layla is supposed to be born in October of 1994, which would make her literally my age. That that makes no sense. Like that's not. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't make any sense. We'll just ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wiki. -a. Whatever you say. Uh, but yeah, as a Scarlet Scarab, she was great. She had a little... Mo like, they never mentioned her name. Um, but it was confirmed after the fact. Like, the showrunner or whatever was like, yeah, no, she was Scarlet Scarab. Uh, and she had a little moment of being like, are you an Egyptian superhero? She's like, yeah. I think that was great. Um, and I, I, uh, the... <laughs> The gold call them. Well, I was gonna say, uh, like, there's some people that like you could call them moderate, you could call them centrist, you could call them pieces of shit. They'd be like, oh my god, they gave a woman a role where she could be the superhero and have her girl boss moment. It's also like one, fuck off. Yeah. But two, in the show, so earned. I I, I think she held her own was like so well. She and as an actress to to be next to what he was doing and to be yeah. just as good uh, like like not even the character yeah. earning but her as an actress like she she fucking earned that shit yeah but not even just in the actress actor acting sense but in the characterization yeah. sense her character is not a mercenary she is an archaeologist at best she has some hand hand combat stuff she has some weapons training Tomb Raider. <clears throat> yeah 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 she's equivalent to Tomb Raider but not with the sort of plot armor that Tomb Raider seems to have. Uh, Tomb Raider gets beat up, but I mean, like, she... she do Her abilities are a bit crazy. But with Layla, like, she was holding her own against dudes way over her size, like, when uh, she's fighting that one uh, guard in Anton's uh, uh, compound. Mm -hmm. She holds her own against the weird uh, tomb protector who she accidentally rips off its arm and tries to stab her with the jagged bone, which is uh, amazing. Dude, that was so scary. That was legitimately like, terrifying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so so she cool. holds her own in all these situations where you th feel like she's probably not supposed to be there. Um, so, which is great when she's holding her own, holding her own, and then she finally gets to be badass and, and show off, and it doesn't feel like a bullshit, like, oh, women empowerment. It feels totally justified and earned. And also, I don't, I'm not the kind of person to be like, oh, women empowerment, because uh, I, I think it's a shitty premise to yeah. begin with that's based in misogyny and being a douchebag. Yeah, being a dickhead. But in this case, I, I think she was great. I, th I think it was well-earned. It was awesome. 
If anything, it's unfortunate that we didn't get to see her do more. I like that the one time she can talk to Kanchu because she was inside the tomb, that's why she could see him. Because in that tomb, uh, it's like they're on the same playing field, right. in a sense. It's their most powerful um, place for those people. Yeah, the one time she could talk to Kanchu, she tells him to fuck off. It's like, I'm not going to be like, over and over her. again, too, because he's like, well, everyone's going to die. She's like, no. He's like, well, She's like, no, I'm doing it without you. Or she actually even said, like, you either work with me or not at all. I'm not going to be your slave. And I was like, yes! Yes, because he's been in manipulative shit this whole time, and you're just fine. Like, yeah, yeah, and and she knows how bad he's been. It's it's it honestly feels sort of like <laughs> it's sort of like she she met up with uh, Mark's toxic ex um, boyfriend and was like, you know what, you've been bad to Mark, and I'm not gonna stand for it, even if he's dead right now. I'm not even gonna let you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna let you walk over him. It's like sort of like that that respect and like. Uh, being like, no, I got you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, yeah, no, I get you, I get you. Yeah, it's it was it was great. So I I loved her inclusion through all this. Apparently, in the comics, um, Layla, this character, and the comics version, it's like a different person, different name, but the roles they filled for Layla here is like I think it worked great, and she helped the show a lot. Uh, I do think Oscar carried it, but that doesn't mean anybody else was. It's only because she was an slacking. Significant amount of episodes, so that's not really on. Yeah, she she also unfortunately was not even in episode. Uh, she she was in her doing side stuff in episode four. She wasn't in episode one, um, and she wasn't basically at all in episode five. And in episode six, she. She's a lot of it. Had a pretty decent yeah. role, but. Yeah, which also goes back to the pacing. It would have been nice if they had stretched out a little more, a little more oh, of yeah. her, maybe a little more in the living world when Mark was dead. Because I think the time between him, like sort of reaching paradise and get, being back alive, felt a little much. Um, but yeah, in general, I, I again, I really like the show. I, I really like Moon Knight. I do think it's goofy that he makes jet noises when he's going uh, through the air. That's a race but, car. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it was really cool seeing all that stuff. And I pray to all that is holy that, because I don't do that, because hmm. that they will have Moon Knight. I, I would love to see him and Spider-Man interact. That'd be incredible. I, yeah, Can I, you imagine how unhinged that would be? I like... like it's very similar to uh, Spider-Man and or Daredevil and the Punisher, um, and how they interacted, actually. Yeah, I mean Spider-Man and Deadpool already have a thing in the comics in terms of like a friendship that's like this shouldn't work, but it does. Yeah. And I feel like a Moon Knight would uh, fulfill a similar thing. But also, um, one thing I should say because I th we have been going a bit, yep. uh, and I don't know how you're doing on time. I will probably but... wrap up here in the next five minutes. Okay, cool. So, I think it's amazing that the MCU is doing well because it means that they could pull in characters that you usually wouldn't think otherwise. And it's like, they've done such a great job of taking characters that you wouldn't expect to do well and make them do really well. Actually, case in point, Iron Man, because before Iron Man uh, in 2008, I believe, he wasn't that big of a character in terms of the grand scope of nah. Marvel Comics. But, obviously, um... Robert Downey Jr. elevated the character, did such a great job, and and then they kept doing stuff with him. But it's like, of all the characters to pick, I, I don't think everyone one had Moon Knight on their bingo card, yep. but the people who were like, Moon Knight's going to be great. Uh, one example being uh, Sir Superhero on TikTok. He is a huge fan of Moon Knight. And I'm so happy to see him happy because it's <laughs> like his favorite Pride and Joy character got like a great uh representation and now like he's like oh, one of my favorite things is that like i'm getting good quality <laughs> moon knight memes <laughs> because of the show and it's like that's great to see i love i love that they could take these characters that might not be the top tier and, and do well with them something that dc hasn't been doing is taking the side characters and making them great because yeah. holy shit they have like four characters in, in the, the top billing, like Wonder Woman and all that, and they're just not doing them well at the moment. It's a, to use a wrestling term, they, uh, they, they're top of their card, or yeah, the top of their cards, they're top card heavy. They don't have a good mid card. Uh, DC yeah. does and I, I, I And I don't even think that's 
it's not a source issue. I I, I think the DC the people making comics. It. Yeah, well, I mean, like, the DC Comics, or, or what they could pull from. DC Comics has a lot of incredible stuff. Yes, it really does. But they keep they keep fucking it up. And it doesn't help that they're side stuff with, uh, or Sony, right? Yeah. Um, with uh, Brock, uh, Venom, with Morbius. I, I think Venom was not bad, but was it great? No. So it was, a, it was at most a six on our scale that we're talking about. Probably more like a five. Uh, Venom 2 or Venom 1? Uh, probably 2 would be a 5, 1 would be a 6. I like 2 a lot less. I would say it's more like 6.5 and 4. Because I, I think Venom 2 retreaded the same stuff as Venom 1, but worse. Yeah, making it PG-13 and also, was lazy, I think, too. But Or not lazy, yeah, it was bad, which is why I actually also like... By the way, oh, I, I, I should say straight out, uh, child abuse bad. Okay, yep. throw that out there. Child abuse bad. Don't hate kids. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Hate but also, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the thing. Child abuse is bad, but I should say that I I like how they portrayed it in this. Yes, because it wasn't just talk about it off camera, so it doesn't have one it doesn't have weight. You yes, have to deal not with the reality that. of it, and I think that's important. Is, I I don't think I think it was. <laughs> it seems so weird. I think the child abuse in this was good. Because they didn't portray it as being some weird villainous thing she did for no reason. She the complexity it's, it's of not being a, a it's, human it, it, lost. Yeah, yeah, it's not an excuse, but the reasoning of her being a she's obviously just absolutely racked with with sadness she's broken. and uh, yeah, she's she she just feels broken after the loss of her child and she just can't overcome that and then she turns to vilifying her the surviving child who she wrongly believes as being at fault. Mm -hmm. And when the beatings happen, it's like, we, we, it was just enough to be like, holy shit. Like it struck a chord. Yeah. Cause it was that, um, I don't, I don't think it's realistic that everyone forms the alternate personality of a British dude from a movie as, as a coping yeah. mechanism. But, you, but, but you car you car compartmentalize or you uh yeah what is it called uh not recompress um what's what i'm thinking of you basically force yourself to forget it oh god what's the fucking yeah, yeah 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 no um, it, it, it was realistic and this is his response to trauma and, it, and it, yeah. it wasn't played for like a gag it wasn't played over the top it felt real it uh the world is so much more morally gray than anyone's yes. ever will in the mitt and they did play as in like um this is not okay what she did and it's mm -hmm. probably not healthy the way he interacted, but this is the reality of what happens. And I think... And it's also it's, great that the fact that she... Like, we get... Like, she basically made his life hell, and that's why he ran away from home. Or not ran away, but left home. And the fact that her death doesn't bring him joy or anything, it just breaks, breaks his him. Heart. Yes. Because... Because he still loves his mom, even if his mom beat him. Because that's how emotions can be sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's how... These relationships can be like just because they did a horrible thing, you still have a hard time. It like has a hard time breaking the fact that you, like they're still family because because you want them to get better. You maybe in his yeah, back of his so, mind, he always thought maybe she would get the help she needed to turn it yeah, around. And yeah, and and obviously they didn't delve into all these things uh, verbally necessarily, but the fact that they get these close uh, and, and touch on these topics is incredible, and also. I think reinforced the fact that like things like Falcon and Winter Soldier would have been greater if, if if it could have been just slightly more um, not PG because I think MCU in general has a tendency to touch on these topics and also their their villains can be bad because they get to the point of like just about being like oh the bad stuff but then they have to make jokey jokes to, yeah. to bring it back a little not bit because they can't to go too undercut. far yeah but like the Nazis were in MCU but there was these jokes and they're like oh, they're not really Nazis. They're like, hmm. They have to sidestep it ever so slightly that it starts to feel watered down. Yeah, like and, trying to have the cake and eat it too. Yeah. So I, I, I liked how they did it with this. Um, I, I do think it's silly to be like, how does she compare to Thanos in terms of being a villain? It's like, that's not exactly right. But I I, I do think that she she struck a chord with a lot of people. And, and Jesus Christ, the actress... Um, don't know her name i'm not gonna look it up i, I sorry because i'm the wikia sucks yeah. i'm not but but the actress 
when she was looking at Marcus, like, this is your fault! And, like, holy shit. Like, I would not be surprised if that, like... She was really, really me- good at being... Uh, yeah, convincing so... us that she's an abusive alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, so, the, so these... All these emotional beats, um... I, I think are incredible for an MCU film. I agree. And... Uh, I, I I appreciate that they could touch on these, and I think it's good also because if you only ever touch on the easy, nice, fluffy topics, then you're really never going to get anywhere, and you can never get that much depth. But the fact that MCU stuff is doing so well, that they feel justified in touching on these topics, even if it's just in a TV show, which is a, a little less of a commitment than a movie, mm-hmm. um, I think is great, and I hope that in the future... I, I do hope that at some point soon we can get a rated R MCU film without it being like a complete side thing. Like how um, that'd be Deadpool's part of the not at all connected to anything. The rumor was that uh, Multiverse of Madness is originally supposed to be R and they backed out of it. They chickened out. I mean, uh, yeah, I could get that. Like That one, I'm, I'm less like, eh, yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> but don't make a PG-13 Deadpool, Disney, these pieces of shit. But the fact... Okay, there's just there's just so much, yep. but yeah, Moon Knight good, <laughs> Oscar Isaac incredible, yes. enjoyable. I want more. Yep. He either needs a solo film or season two. Or an OnlyFans, I'd take that too. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You'd probably be like, well, uh, for the Patreon bonus, Almut's in there too. It's like, shut up, no. But yeah, I said gator um, titties four times, and you're the most uncomfortable person in the entire world. Four, yeah, I ha- I bring up the the the, the taxonomy or whatever for. For, You've been for on the, the internet. The, they put tits on everything. I am not at fault here. That's okay. Whatever you say. Whatever coping you have to take. But, but yeah. Rule 34. Um, cl- mm, closing <laughs> thoughts on Moon Knight. Uh, same same as you. Uh, acting good. Some stuff cheesy. But overall, very good experience. I'm glad I watched it. Yes. I'll probably watch through it at least one more time. Hell yeah. Um, big, 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 big agree. I agree on your agree on my agree. Yes. Yeah. Um, plugs but hey that's just our thoughts it's just a theory. what's your thoughts l- l- let us know uh, i don't know how people can uh go to now, the but... after the hype website where these episodes are posted and comment oh, yeah. down below uh and enjoy some of our other um other podcasts uh demon days the the D D podcast and uh right now they're on binge buddies they're going through all the phantasm movies uh they just finished it up so Enjoy those. Nice. Uh, so, plugs before we go? Yeah. Oh, do I go first? Yeah. Oh, also, okay. I just want to bring up that this is the third episode in a row that consumed t- content has been shouted out. Uh, <laughs> Chari <laughs> and yeah, maybe... uh, Tetra both plugged it uh, when they were on. Oh, nice. Yeah. I was going to say, maybe maybe we'll finally get past <laughs> 200 subscribers because I haven't shot it on the main channel. Even if I did, it probably wouldn't help much. But yeah, I have a, I have a side channel named Consume Content where I talk about the content I've consumed. I, I think the underlying sentiment of it is that I want to sort of... It's a space where I could think about stuff and try to um, have some nuance and, and, and whatnot. Uh, and also, I, I, do, I, do, I have my set in Unreal Engine, so it's just a weird way where I could sort of flex those skills. Uh, my channel, D-Pad Gamer, where I do gaming stuff, which... It's not at all similar, but, you know, it's there. <laughs> and uh, I have a Twitter, but that's irrelevant. Deep Pit Gamer. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, that's it for me. Um, for Damage Roost, Damage Roost Podcast, uh, we have Patreon. Uh, if you want to help me uh, keep the lights on, hopefully eventually get into doing more streaming and uh, at some point maybe some internet content other than a podcast would be great. Uh, Damage Roost Pod on Twitter. Damage Roost Podcast on TikTok. And uh, and Twitch, which is Dan Boosh, also Damage's podcast. So, yeah, D Pad's been great. Um, I gotta run, and I know you got things to do. So, uh, thanks again, and everybody, be good people. <laughs>